Don't know which retinoid is right for you? I'm board certified dermatologist Dr. Jenny Liu and I'm going to teach you how to choose the right one for your skin in this video. Now retinoids are derivatives of vitamin A and as dermatologists we prescribe them in topical as well as oral forms to treat various skin conditions including acne. Nowadays you can also find various types of topical retinoids in skincare products in drugstores or on Sephora and that's just large category of the active ingredient ingredient, which is a retinoid that works on our skin in various different ways. Topical retinoids is by far the most studied ingredient in the skincare world, if you will. And here I'm mostly referring to prescription tretinoin. We have a lot of data and studies showing the benefits of tretinoin when it comes to treating and improving signs of skin aging, helping with fine lines, wrinkles, uneven skin texture, skin tone, as well as in improving the thickness of our skin and helping with hyperpigmentation. Furthermore, prescription tretinoin is also very, very helpful and one of really the foundation medications that dermatologists give for treatment of acne. It is by far one of the most effective in unclogging pores and really helping to prevent acne. So over time also helps with blackheads, whiteheads, and the appearance of pore size and also helps to treat inflammatory acne. So really tretinoin is such a great great prescription medication or such a great ingredient. And you know, as a dermatologist, aside from sunscreen, if I had to pick only one other product to use, it'd probably be, you know, tretinoin or some sort of retinoid because like I said, it's just super effective and such a well-studied ingredient. Now, tretinoin has been around since the 1950s, I believe. And you know, despite all the amazing things they can do, there is unfortunately no perfect ingredient, right? And so one of the biggest downsides to tretinoin Known is that they can be very irritating and drying. And of course, we can teach you how to use it and you know work up the tolerance and you know help ways to minimize the irritation. But for some individuals, especially those with more mature, dry, and sensitive skin, they just have a really hard time using tretinoin. And so because of that irritation, we have really now developed a whole new market of over-the-counter topical retinoids like retinol or retinaldehyde, also known as retinol that are also amazing and helpful as well. Now, because the benefits of topical retinoids, whether it's prescription or cosmeceutical forms, really comes with long-term use. We're talking about here using it for six months or longer. It's really a marathon, not a sprint, guys. Really, you want to find the right one that you can use on a regular basis. And so today, I'm going to help you find the right one for your skin type and to help Help address your skin concerns. So let's get into it. Number one, if you are suffering from acne and you've not used any product, I recommend going with over-the-counter Adapalene Put 1% Gel. Adapalene used to be a prescription as known as Differin and over-the-counter you can find it in two different brands. Number one, the Differin brand or the one from La Roche-Posay, the Adapalene Put 1% Gel. There's just one concentration, the Put 1% and both of these are exactly the same in a gel formulation. Reason why I recommend Adapalene are number one, it's readily available for those who are not able to get in or see a dermatologist. You have something that you can start with that we know works really well. And it's a little bit better than tretinoin in some ways. Number one, it is a lot more stable. It's stable to light and also against degradation from benzene peroxide. So theoretically, you can use it in the morning, but I just recommend everyone to use it at night to just get in the habit of using your retinoid at night because most retinoids should be used at night. And two, you can combine it with leave-on benzene peroxide and it won't get degraded like most retinoids do. The reason why I also love Adapalene as a good starter retinoid for those who have acne is that it's more lipophilic, meaning it's able to penetrate your oil glands more effectively and it's a lot more gentle than tretinoin. And so for those who've never used a topical retinoid, this is just a really good one to start. Also keep in mind that when you are treating your skin with acne fighting ingredients, your skin is gonna get really dry and irritated and that itself can potentially flare acne. So starting something with a mild retinoid like Adapalene is gonna be beneficial. Furthermore, Adapalene like tretinoin helps to unclog pores, treat and prevent acne 
acne helps with blackheads and whiteheads as well as acne associated hyperpigmentation. There are some studies that show adapalene may also improve some photo damage and uh, photo aged skin. The studies is uh, far and few compared to tretinoin but I am a big believer that it's, it does offer some benefits but I would personally never recommend using adapalene just to treat photo aging. I think if you are in your like late 20s or early 30s but you're struggling a lot with acne but also want to maybe have use something that may help benefit that skin aging component I think adapalene would be a great one to start. Now adapalene is not as strong as prescription tretinoin so if you have used adapalene for some time notice an improvement with your acne but feel like things could get even better this is where I would recommend seeing your dermatologist for a stronger strength topical retinoid such as tretinoin. Here going up on a high strength of a retinoid does help with providing better acne control. So if you tried adapalene you're getting some benefits but would like to see more then see your dermatologist for a prescription tretinoin. Now if you're suffering from acne but also have a lot of sun damaged skin and really want to improve on that then I recommend just going to see your dermatologist and get on a prescription tretinoin. Prescription tretinoin I'm referring to the strength of 0.025, 0.05 or 0.1 percent. There are a lot of other super low dose strength tretinoin you can get like for example via Curology. There's really no studies on those strengths so we don't know the efficacy when it comes to improving acne as well as photo aged skin. And so I really recommend going with the studied concentrations which are 0 0.025, 0 0.05, and 0.1. When it comes to treating acne as I mentioned earlier the stronger strength does provide you more benefit but when it comes to photo aging all the concentrations work similarly. Keep in mind though higher concentration does give you more side effects of dryness and irritation and if you are new to tretinoin I recommend going with the lower strength 0.025 and working your way up if necessary. So here prescription strength tretinoin be beneficial for those who have acne who may have failed adapalene and need something stronger or those who have acne and really have photo aged skin that can benefit from a prescription but keep in mind like I said it is often very irritating so it's something that you want to start off low build up a tolerance and then gradually work up as needed. Now if you have dry or sensitive skin mature skin and really want to get on a topical retinoid purely for the benefits of improving skin aging then I recommend starting with a cosmeceutical retinol retinal. These are formulations that have good number of studies backing their efficacy and really helping with improving signs of fine lines, wrinkles, uneven skin texture, and skin tone. But they're far less irritating than prescription tretinoin. So the reason why retinol is a lot better tolerated and less irritating is that when it's applied to your skin, retinol needs to be converted in two steps to retinoic acid, which is tretinoin. Retinoic acid is the active form of retinoids that goes into our skin and does all the goodness that it's supposed to do. Now that two-step conversion that retinol has to do only takes place in certain types of metabolically active cells but that also means that conversion really dulls the effects and less irritation. Retinaldehyde or retinol needs to be converted in one step. So theoretically retinol is slightly more concentrated or maybe more irritating than retinol or a little bit stronger if you will but really clinically I find that both retinol and retinol are very similar when it comes to benefits and irritation. So when I say retinol or retinol is not as strong as tretinoin, it doesn't mean that they're not effective. We have a lot of really good studies demonstrating that retinol and retinol are very helpful in improving skin texture, skin tone, fine lines, and wrinkles. But because it's less concentrated or less potent, that benefit will just come a little bit longer with use. But remember guys, when it comes to using a topical retinoid, it's really a marathon, not a sprint. When we are talking about long-term use, we're talking about six months or longer, and even of course, you know, the span of years and really using it on a regular basis is really where you're gonna see the benefits. The other thing, keep in mind that retinols are hard to formulate and they can be quite unstable. And so here, I just recommend in general, going with larger, more reputable brands that you know is gonna have well-formulated ingredients that also 
or money into research and development. So going with larger brands is really going to be the key here. So a few retinol products that I have been using, that I've used and really like. One you guys heard me talk about is from CeraVe, their skin resurfacing retinol serum. This one contains licorice root, so also help with hyperpigmentation as well. CeraVe also has that purple skin renewing line that contains a retinol and that is great as well for those who are just looking for a retinol to help with, you know, fine lines and wrinkles. Another retinol that I'm using currently is from Mirad, the Retinol Youth Renewing Serum. This is very gentle, not irritating. I've been using this on my face, on my neck, as well as back of my hands and have not had an issue. So this is another great one to check out if you're interested in like a retinol serum. Now, retinaldehydes, retinols are a little bit harder to find in products. And I think just because it's slightly newer, it's harder to formulate. But two brands I recommend if you are looking for a retinaldehyde product is one from Aven. So Aven has a retinaldehyde called Retinol. And this is a great one that is very, very gentle. And actually, I just saved this bottle to show you guys. I don't think there's barely any product left, but this is a great one to use. If you uh, have used a retinol and want to maybe step up the game a little bit, but don't want to quite try a prescription strength retinoin, I would say you can try this one. But like I said, this one is not really much more irritating, very tolerable. And I mostly consider retinol and retinols to be a very similar strength and efficacy. And so this is a great one to try. Another one that I am currently using as well is a brand that is more available in Europe, but they're, um, they're starting to uh, have a market here in the US and it's called Medigate. And they're really known for their retinoids, retinol as well as retinol. And this is a, a retinol one. I've been using this um, the past three months and find it fairly gentle, not irritating. So two retinol to high products if you are interested. Lastly, if you have super sensitive skin or you're just simple, you want to combine your routine and looking for a retinol and a moisturizer because usually those are going to be a lot more moisturizing than just using a retinol suit. Serum, I recommend checking out the following. And you guys have probably heard me talk about this on my social media on Instagram, but there is the Neutrogena Rapid Repair Retinol Cream that is very moisturizing. It contains retinol and Neutrogena has a lot of studies and research poured into their formulation. So that is definitely one I recommend trying out if you are number one, new, have dry and sensitive skin, or want to just use a retinol and moisturizer in one. Similarly, another one I really like is from Olay, their Retinol 24. This one's, I find it to be very, very moisturizing as well. In addition, it contains their peptides along with the retinol that can help to give maybe additional boost to your anti-aging regimen. So two moisturizers with retinol that I recommend checking out if you have dry and sensitive skin. Now, one last thing, if you have been using a retinol for some time and find your skin tolerating it really well, but want to step up the game when it comes to photo aging, skin aging, then you can consider talking to your dermatologist and trying out a prescription tretinoin. Because tretinoin is a bit stronger, it is going to give you slightly more benefits when it comes to skin aging as well compared to, you know, the cosmeceutical retinols. But along with that comes irritation. So if you're ready, kind of build up a tolerance. And here guys, I, when I say tolerance, I don't mean that the retinol benefits stop working on your skin. It's mostly that your skin has gotten used to the dryness and irritation. Then consider trying tretinoin and see if your skin is able to tolerate that because like I said, tretinoin is really the gold standard. And if there's one thing that I can only pick, it would be tretinoin. I hope you guys found this video to be helpful. Let me know in the comments below which topical retinol you're currently using. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you guys next time.